Well, hello guys, welcome back. Uh, most happy of squeaks today. I got another low key hole. Um, this one, um, excuse me, this one I'm gonna show you on camera like this because sometimes it's just easier. Like you saw, the other camera's getting really dodgy, and um, I was going through a time when I was trying to work through my photography career, and that poor deer went in snowstorms and everything else. So it's why she doesn't work too good anymore. But here we go. First is the Kovo. <laughs> this smells so good. This is, I bought this years and years and years ago on uh, eBay. And I could never find it again. And I was like, I I I'm down to the bottom. And I'm like, you know, uh, I'm never going to get this Kovo again. I'm never going to have this again. And I found this on Amazon. And when it said it was made in Mexico, I was like, yeah, because one thing I do really believe in, like, trying to give back to the culture, whoever you're using it from. And I also believe in um, trying to keep things authentic. Uh, I got that, uh, what I got Kobo for originally was when I started working with La Santa. They were like, it's one of those smells that she goes absolutely insane for. And I always believe in trying to study and learn about the culture of whoever you work with. And you guys know, when she first came into my life, I was like, oh no. <laughs> because I'd seen what a lot of other gringos had seen, yeah. Um, all this negative stuff about her. And that's why I ended up writing articles in that once she finally won my heart and she finally showed me how loving and kind she is. That's why I ended up writing so many articles on her. Now, I see her as a goddess, but we all know in this household, I cannot pronounce her name. I'll, it, it'll come out like Michoato or something, and that's wrong. So, I always call her La Santa, the Queen, La, La Regina, whatever. And she's fine with it, because language is just not one of my skills. I have problems with English, as you guys know. And, um, I've always used it for cleansing or used it on Saturdays as offerings for her or whatever and it just like when the Norse gods came in I'm like well they're not gonna like this I'm gonna have to go out and get stuff they'll like and they're like no they like copal and they like sage why am I keeping them out of this <laughs> and like I've found out with my gods like when you're doing something that's supposed to and this is my experience you could take it or leave it when you're doing something that's supposed to be meant for another god or deity and you're really enjoying it, and you're really into it. Well, they're all going to come over naturally and be like, well, why aren't we in on this? Why, why are we excluded? So I actually use copal, and I use sage in this house. Um, I had a sweeter sage bundle that I have like a nub left of, and I, did, I got the white sage, and the white sage is a lot stronger and smokier, and it just, it, it, it hits you really hard, but I like that too. So I got that. Got the copal, but look what else came in. I like almost screamed when I saw this book came in. It's one of those books that I've seen it in the past and then it's gone, and then I've seen it in the past, and I was like, I have spent so much money this month. I've been so bad on my budget. I've like like been blowing money on books and stuff like that. And then I'm like, no, it's not blowing money, it's you know, investing in stuff because now I'll have the book and I'll have it forever. Because there's already one book that was mentioned in, I think it was Kreskova's bibliography that I can't even find it on eBay. And eBay has everything. And it's like, okay, so I already know of one Loki book that I will probably not see for a very, very long time. Because I never believe you will never get it. I believe if you're hunting for something, universe will eventually cough it up for you. But this... Now, this, I will give you forewarning, um, this is not going to be, if you're, like, looking for Loki 101, this is not it. I actually ordered a Loki 101 book from Etsy, and I'm, like, really excited to get that as well. I ordered a printer error copy. But this is going to be more, and I just, like, read little tidbits on Amazon, more of a personal relationship book. This, so if you're really extremely jealous and I only say this because I've met people like this if you're really extremely jealous of everyone else's relationship with Loki this is probably not the book for you it probably will upset you so don't read it but um if you want to hear about someone else's relationship it's good and I like I actually like that at first like when like I was first like officially working with Loki again I wasn't too head on that stuff either 
But then I'm like, this can give you relationship advice. This can let you see something else about Loki because he's so multifaceted. Um, says on the back, love is what makes you holy. Loki, trickster, shapeshifter, father and mother of monsters and witches. Muse and master who wise and cunning and trickster. And tricks, sorry. He is all of these things and more, and he inspires fierce love and emotion among his followers. No kidding. Put two Lokians into a room and you will either hear them get along or you will hear Rawr! <laughs> Um Part memoir, part love song to the divine within and without. Beyond Reason explores pagan mysticism and devotion. I like that she said pagan instead of heathen, because a lot of times... I actually won't use the title heathen myself, even though a lot of people would call me that, because I just feel so unwelcome by the community, and I think the people I've met that go by, like, the rules of virtue or that, they're usually people that try to shove them up your six because they're feeling self-righteous. No offense, man. I'm sure there are perfectly lovely people that live by them, but the only people I've met that drag them out, drag them out to beat you over the head with it and prove they're right and you're wrong. And I'm like, well, those are really stupid kind of ways to treat your rule book. Um, you, you, and it's, to me, it's their rule book. It's not my rule book. It's like, you guys know my past, like, especially the one on hospitality. I'm like, F you. I never grew up with that. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, I try to be candid with you guys so you know where I'm coming from. If I don't believe in something, it, like a lot of other people don't believe in it. There's usually past reasons for it. Like, if you came to my house, I'd be hospitable. I'd get you coffee or something to eat or something, provided I had it. It wasn't, like, a, on a super lean time. But at least get you a glass of water, have you sit down, you know, talk to you and that. And, like, I've changed my living room around. Like, the babies used to be there, but now I'm going to have, like, the uh, Scentsy Gal come more often. I'm like, well, I can't just have the babies here. Um, I have to move them up. So they're all up in the second bedroom, and they're, like, they're not perfect, but they're up there. And that way, you know, I can have some people come in and they can sit somewhere besides at my desk. It's like when you live alone, at least for me, um, you just get so used to designing the house, especially for yourself, that then when you get guests, it's like, where am I going to sit them? I mean, I have tons of seating outside. And I have now I have tons of seating in this living room. But, you know, for a person that lives alone all the time, it's like sometimes you look at it and you're like, I could have better use of that space. But I wanted to share that stuff with you. And it's probably kicked off the topic. And I'm just, I'm really grateful to my gods for everything they've given me. Um, I just wrote like a little brief snippet of a skullduggery pleasant thing. And that actually does mean something because I was like, I went through, I was going through such a bad depression at the time I was writing this stuff, and that was like the only thing keeping me alive at one point. And to get back into it, and to get back into it as a thing of instead of I have to do this to like stay alive and walk forward one step at a time, to get back into it as a thing, well, you know, I can't work on this channel all day, I can't work on the other channel all day. It's kind of nice to have something else to do, and kind of nice to be back into writing. Um, does that mean I'll be back on Hub Pages too? I don't think so because it seems like the part of my brain that can do stories is still there. The part of my brain that can still do videos is still there. But I'm not sure how it would work for an article. It seems like when I go to write articles, and I've tried off and on, um, whatever part of the brain handles that, it's, it's just not there anymore. It's easier now for me to make a video for you guys on it. And that's okay, because my gods really blessed me. When the medication knocked me out and I couldn't write anymore, and I used to be a prolific writer, I used to write, like, at least an article a day. Um, one time at, on Squidoo, I think I had 400 or 700 articles, literally, um, all active. And I lost that, and when you lose that, and that's such a big part of your who you are and how you think of yourself... Um, I was devastated, but I didn't have time to be devastated. I was like, what am I going to do with myself? And luckily, I got into YouTube, and luckily it's worked. I mean, it hasn't taken off like wildfire. I, I don't want you guys to think, I don't want you to think, oh, she's you, she's rich now and everything's worked out. No, I could really use probably opening a Patreon account at some point. But 
you know, it's still like I've survived and the gods gave me that gift. Um, you know, I never thought I'd be good at doing videos. I never wanted to do videos. I always liked writing and being like pretty much anonymous. But, you know, I was getting to the point where I was dissatisfied too. Because if you write um, a lot of pagan stuff, you will get heavily attacked. And you know you will. It, it seems like everybody... in Every small-minded person in the pagan community has to come and give you their two cents. Where, um, when you're making videos, you can just tell these people to shove off and get rid of them. I mean, some platforms don't let you do that. Like, when you're working at hub pages, you can't tell people, bah, bah, bah. But you most certainly can on YouTube. I mean, if people are rude here, you can be rude right back. And I'm just, I'm just really, really grateful because, um, you know, La Santa picked me up after the death of my mother and Baron was there and they were all there and Ogu was there and <laughs> like when Ogu came in as my head I was like no but I'm like really happy to have them all and I don't discuss so many of them because it's just you know well one is a Lokian channel and two um it, it just becomes something you're so used to having them there that you know you take it for granted sometimes you don't discuss them and you know, and Loki's picked me up too, obviously. Like, uh, he's got me off the medication because I was like, you know, I had to get off that medication. Then he got me off the tremor medication. Now, I still notice I have, like, some tremors. And that my, I still think it's from that medication. Because I, I didn't have, I mean, I always shook off and on, but I never had them to that degree until I went on that medication. And... I still have good days and I still have bad days, but when I have the bad day, it's not like I have to go out and be on something to deal with this. It's I know I'm going to have bad, good days and bad days for the rest of my life. I mean, they say you can totally cure depression, but I think for some of us, it's like it's just down to the DNA genetic. And um, I'm learning to deal with it without being on the drugs because I can think, I can talk to you, I can, I finally was able to write something. Um, and the good days are better and I'm not acting manic depressive anymore. Like, I think the drugs did do some good. I think they cleared out and like kind of helped the body reset though. Um, the complications they've left behind, I don't know that I'd wish anybody I'd ever be on Expexor. But, um... You know, I'm just grateful because your gods will come in and they will do things for you. No, you know, obviously Loki's, and, and I'm, I'm addressing this too because I think he's listening. Obviously Loki's probably never going to make me a millionaire, but, you know, I've been okay. I haven't lived the lifestyle maybe I lived at one time, but that was, you know, that was decades ago. And that was back when everybody went shopping and money was going to just magically come from somewhere and god knows what my parents finances were like but that's how we did it and actually the way we did that is that my mom would work really hard selling avon i mean she would just work hours out of the day and that way she was able to provide for us kids to provide us clothes and to provide us you know, you know like extra clothes it's not like our dad wouldn't buy us clothes but anytime we needed anything extra. He would say no. So my mom was like, fine, I'm going out and I'm getting a job and I'm treating these kids right. I mean, out of the two, uh, my mom was the one that would be more beneficial and spend the time with you. It didn't mean she didn't have a bad temper and she didn't have her own challenges to overcome. But she did the best she could for us. And another thing I'm grateful to for Loki, he's like really stepped up because, you know, people like pressure you when you're um pagan that you have to honor honor your ancestors now i would give honor to my mom every day of the week we had a contentious relationship at times and we could fight really well because you know we were both so bullheaded but you know we still loved each other and even if my dad was the way he was. My mom was the one to say somebody at least believed in me. And as long as I was happy, she didn't care if I scrubbed toilets for a living. As long as I was happy doing it and that, like, things would always work out. So, like, I would honor her any day of the week, but my dad, I'd hit him with a truck. I mean, he became, like, a best friend towards the end of his life when he was dealing with cancer and everything. But, you know, when we were growing up, he was terrifying. And Loki's helped me deal with a lot of the issues that I had in my past. And 
I was raised, well, you have to be stoic and just let go of it. And Loki's like, no, this crap's unfair. This crap happened to you, and it shouldn't have, and you have to deal with it. Because if you don't um, address it and realize it was wrong to have been done to you, uh, you, you'll never be able to let go of it. And he's helped a lot with that. And um, he's the one God will tell you it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be, uh, you know not forgiving people because some people don't deserve to be forgiven um we don't have a christian concept of i'll forgive you and love you no matter what some people just they don't deserve forgiveness they don't deserve to have your time if they come to you as an ancestor and they want something if they were horrible to you you have every right to say no um i think it's philon kines it's just that uh, and uh, that really helped but it's really helpful with loki because loki's like absolutely if somebody's treated you unwell he will not have you honoring that person because uh it's not the right thing to do or obligation or anything on your part so i just wanted to make the video because i i haven't read the book yet so this isn't a reaction to the book but it's just i'm grateful and i don't think i tell him that enough and I don't think I get it across enough to you guys. I'm like trying not to cry on um, camera because I'm emotional, but in a good way. I'm like just, I'm just, I'm happy for everything he's done for me. And, um, you know, I just, I want to get that across to you guys. Um, so I hope you like what you've seen. And if you have anything you want to share below, any comments, leave them below. Like, comment, subscribe, of course. And I'll see you guys later, and this is just so thrilling, and I'll probably end up getting into the book fairly soon. And um, when I'm done, I'll probably do a review, but yeah, it looks really, really good. And I'll be honest, if I don't like it, you guys will know. And I do have that one other book coming in, and it was another thing where I thought, well, it's a Loki book, and I know if Loki books, they pop in and they pop out. If I don't order this book, I'm going to be kicking myself because once it's gone, it's gone. And I love to read. Okay, guys, I hope you like that. I know I keep going on. I'm like a little hyper today, but um, I was sick as a dog when I got up. And then I wrote some skullduggery and I feel better. <laughs> okay, so I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.